Ika a paper trying to look at the incremental cost of uh, increasing access to maternal health care services. And this particular uh, paper draws from uh, a voucher scheme in eastern Uganda that looks at how do we really use demand side uh, financing as well as supply side financing to uh, improve access to maternal, maternal health. Again, this comes from the, the viewpoint that uh, although there's been a lot of um, AMC attendances, we haven't really seen much uh, deliveries taking place in health facilities. Uh, just to give you a little uh, statistics, in Uganda only 41% of mothers they live in health facilities. And uh, of this 41%, 20% uh, comes from the rural, the rural areas. So that uh, immediately points to the fact that there is this geographical disparity in terms of uh, use of health facilities. So uh, if we are to tackle issues of uh, uh, high matern uh, maternal mortality, then we need to look at the area of how do we increase facility deliveries, how do we increase at, um, deliveries that are supervised by uh, professional, professional health workers. So as you know, uh, the WHO predicts that up to 75% Actually, of the, of the deaths could be averted if we ensure that there is timely access to uh, uh, critical maternal health services. So, in that view, we thought it was necessary to address issues that constrain, uh, constrain mothers from uh, using health facilities, among which were issues around lack of transport, the cost of transport, uh, other um, socioeconomic issues. So that's where the, uh, the voucher project com uh, comes in. What this paper aims to look at is uh, not to take the bigger picture of the cost effectiveness analysis, but to specifically look at the incremental cost of uh, a voucher project in accessing maternal health care, again using the evidence or using uh, data from uh, the voucher scheme in Uganda. Uh, of course we underscore, as I again said, we underscore the limitations of a cost effectiveness analysis that look, it doesn't consider the wider economic benefits. So we, we are more interested in really showing the cost of a voucher project so that uh, policy makers can look at whether it is feasible to undertake such a subsidy policy other than uh, taking the broader uh, picture of a cost effectiveness analysis. So, uh, in terms of the voucher package, this scheme uh, distributes vouchers that one that entitle the mother, the pregnant mother, to transport to and from the health facility for the four ANCs, the delivery, and then one PNC. So um, we also have a voucher that entitles the mother on reaching the, the health facility to access the services. So all this uh, is paid for by the scheme. And as part of the package, we do health system strengthening, which includes training of health workers, provision of basic uh, supplies and equipment, and uh, support supervision. So uh, in terms of the uh, cost of transport, on average, a voucher uh, uh, ranges from US dollars 1.8 to 4.5. Uh, this uh, table shows uh, the different pricing regimes. We did a pilot from December 2009 to May 2010. 
and that had uh, a whole lot of prices that we that we thought so for for example for ANC one in a government facility the voucher was going for 0 0.9 dollars uh, compared to uh, uh, a PNFP where the voucher was uh, worth 1.14 dollars a delivery in government was 5.1 and in the PNFP was 6.82. When it comes to the implementation phase, we kind of switch the course, of course looking at the, the resource envelope that is available for the scheme, but also a whole lot of uh, economic issues. So we decide to, to change the, the costing, but also to kind of take on as many mothers because the demand becomes overwhelming at this point. So in a government facility now, uh, the voucher for ANC1, for example, is 0 0.4, and then in a PNFP, 0 0.55. Uh, for a delivery in a government facility, uh, the voucher is uh, $2.7 against $3.64 for uh, a PNFP. Now this is the second period of implementation. Again, we a lot of changes as to the costing structure happen, and those are the the current cost uh, current cost structure that, that is now being uh, being used. Now, in terms of the methodology, uh, again we use the ingredients approach for costing, and the costs that we include in this. Uh, this analysis are from the provider's perspective and we only capture those costs for the implementation period. So that's beginning in June 2010 uh, to June 2011. This uh, table shows uh, the structure of the costs that we capture. One, uh, we capture the voucher costs and these are the uh, transport and service vouchers. Uh, voucher printing, distribution, voucher identification. We also capture costs of health system strengthening, uh, again, that include health worker training, procurement of uh, basic supplies and equipment, and uh, regular uh, support supervision. Uh, we also capture costs of sensitization and mobilization, radio messaging, uh, documentary, film shows, and all of that, and then uh, also the overall administration for the program. Uh, we also, uh, these costs are collected from project accountabilities and financial records that are audited. We go ahead and estimate the average uh, transport cost uh, for deliveries by looking at the number of women that are transported, and then the total transport uh, voucher cost. We try to estimate the incremental costs by calculating additional costs against um, additional effects. Yeah, in terms of uh, really summary results, because this is a work in progress, we realize uh, the cost of service vouchers that includes administration, printing of vouchers, and, and, and others, the cost is about 95 uh, roughly 96,000 US, uh, US dollars. The cost of transport vouchers, that includes again administration, printing, uh, voucher identification, is or goes up to around 185,000 US dollars. When you look at the summary of costs that are incurred under health systems strengthening, you realize that the largest component goes to equipment, drugs and supplies, and uh, procurement of sundries, which is about um, 101,000 US dollars. So overall, the cost of health system strengthening is um, uh, 125,000 US dollars. When we just take a glimpse at uh, the distribution of costs 
by activity, we realize that the largest percentage of costs go to transport uh, vouchers are around 36%, roughly 37%, followed by costs that are incurred on health system strengthening, which is about 25%. The lowest cost is uh, sensitization and mobilization. So overall, the cost that is incurred for the scheme is about, for the implementation period again, is about 500 uh, uh, 500,000 US dollars. This graph just shows the distribution of costs by uh, activity. Again, you see that the voucher, transport voucher cost is the highest, followed by uh, health systems strengthening. This table shows the service vouchers different services, ANCs, delivery, PNC, caesarean section, and as you might realize, the largest cost of, uh, goes to delivery, or the largest services that have been utilized, the number of vouchers reimbursed were for delivery at around 57%. Uh, when you look at the total cost of transport, excluding referral transport, we realize it is about uh, 183,000 US dollars. When we compare it with the number of women that have been uh, transported during the implementation period, which is 39,000 women, we realize the cost of transport per woman transported is or stands about at about 4.6 US dollars. In terms of the incremental cost for a, de, uh, for a delivery, we look at the total cost that has been spent on deliveries, which is around 300,000 US dollars, and then we capture the additional deliveries that have been, uh, that have been done during the implementation period, those are about 19,000 deliveries. And so we, we get the average, the incremental cost per additional institutional delivery standing at around 15.7 uh, US dollars. Again, the cost of PNC is also, um, the incremental cost is about 13.7 uh, US dollars. So in terms of conclusion, really, we realize that the incremental cost per, uh, per delivery and PNC seem to appear small. But if you thought about scaling up such a voucher program, these costs are likely to be huge, especially for a population that has higher fertility rates standing at 6.7. So if you're really scaling up is a challenge for um, countries that are resource constrained. So, uh, secondly, to ensure that uh, the voucher scheme succeeds, we realize that a lot of resources are needed for uh, health systems strengthening, so as to guarantee the quality uh, of the outcomes. So, uh, thinking about policy, uh, again, we, we think that finding ways of mobilizing the community to own the scheme and taking advantage of taking, uh, uh, current technologies, for example, e-payment, would help to solve issues or to kind of tackle issues of sustainability because then they will reduce one administrative cost. They will also help to raise additional funding that may be necessary. So as policymakers think about such subsidy policies, they have to really be careful about the financial implications, the feasibility, and the sustainability of some of these, because really they are huge policies that require a lot of resources. Thank you.